to worship on the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. You would see green parliaments today and from next week it will change. Next week is Transfiguration Sunday and following that would be Sundays in Lent. The two letters that you see, one like an X and one like a P, are actually two letters in Greek, <coughs> Chi and Rho. These are the two letters for Christos and the ancient church, they, they call this as the Christogram, the monogram for Christ. So when we change the pyramids, it also means a change in the church calendar, the season. So from the Advent season to Christmas, we move to Epiphany, which really means God's glory revealed in Jesus. Today we would observe how God's glory was revealed in the life and ministry of Jesus in public and private places. There was no place where God's glory was not revealed. As you would have read in that short meditation that is typed each time we prepare the bulletin, you will get the gist of the day's worship. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, Wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have no need but have no hope to such you. We have no need of one another. Spirit, but only each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us, and in life proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world. The God who subdues the rulers of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. The reading. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Here ends the reading. Today's psalm is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11 and 20c, printed in your bulletin. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The glory goes to Jerusalem. And gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly that the has wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God. Who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the mind of the horse and has no pleasure in the seed of the run. But finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. The second reading is from the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 16 through 23. God entrusted Paul with the responsibility of bringing the gospel to diverse people. Hence, the focus of Paul's ministry is not his own rights or privileges as an apostle, but the privilege of serving God by freely sharing the good news of Christ with others. The reading. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have been made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Here in the reading. <laughs> left 
Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord.
on, dad's cell phone's always on. We want to have that phone to Jesus always on. Okay? All right? Okay. A little preface before we say our prayer. We stay in our seats and keep our hands folded that we say amen. Okay? Because I know some of you. There's a couple of you like, run, huh? I promise it'll still be there. Okay? <laughs> All right. Hold your hands. Read it out with me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. May I always. Talk with you. Talk with you. Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, take us by your hand. Lead us on one step at a time in this journey of life. When we are weary, steady us. Give us that strength and comfort that will fill our bodies and soul with the energy and faith that we need in this pilgrimage of life. And use me, Lord, one more time, every time, to proclaim your message of love and truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. February 4th is the International Day of Human Fraternity. February 4th is also World Cancer Day. A day first when we remember that we are all children of God, that we are all siblings in Christ. That God watches over everyone. Just as the psalmist said, God, when I look up at the heavens and I see all those stars, who am I? What am I that you should take care of me, look at me, watch over me? And today's psalm says, God knows each star by name. And at a time, in our first reading, we had this uh, idea, the thought, that when people were in exile, they, they complained. They said, God, you have forgotten all about us. We don't feel that you are present with us because we are weary, we are tired. God's word is, I am your creator. I am with you. Even in those days when our life journey is full of ups and downs. And I think that experience is familiar to all of us. When we wonder if God knows at all, whether there is a God at all in this world. And that's when we emphasize prayer as a way of keeping that airways free with God. I remember asking my dad, it's not fair that God answers all your prayers and looks like God takes a while to respond to our prayers. My dad smiled and said, that's because I talk to God. What does talking to God mean in and through prayer? Every morning when we wake up, our waking thoughts as, thank you, oh God, for this gift of life, life breath, because you are our God. So it's not only an affirmation of our faith that God is with us, God knows us, but it should also fill us with that consciousness and faith. What then do we do? So what if God is with us all the time? Does that have any meaning, any significance in our lives? The parable, the story 
of healing, teaching, preaching that we have every time reminds us of that good news, that God cares for each one of us. <coughs> In the story that we read today about the healing of Simon's mother-in-law, we find that she is down with fever, absolutely weary, tired, not knowing if there will be a tomorrow. And we find Jesus, when he is told by James and John that Simon's mother-in-law is not well, he heads there immediately after his preaching and teaching in the synagogue. I would like us to notice how there is no distinction between teaching, preaching, healing, ministry of Jesus. The second point, whenever there is a teaching, healing and preaching, in Jesus' ministry, it is not just to one person that it is rendered. Even though Jesus may have healed one person, Simon's mother-in-law, you find that it is a teaching, preaching and healing of a community at every time. For Simon's mother-in-law who may have thought, let me prepare for my end. That's it. Who knows whether I exist? You find that affirmation that God watches for you, watches out for you every time. And when Jesus heals her, once she is free from that fever, when she is healed, the spontaneous response is service. I would like you to take a look at your bulletin covers. <coughs> what is the woman doing? She is bringing bread. She is serving. In our minds, when service is linked to a woman, very often it is understood as serving tea or coffee or food. <coughs> Let me highlight one word. The word is service. She served them. The same word service, diaponia, is the word that is used for explaining Jesus' ministry. Later on in the same Gospel of Mark when Jesus says, I have come not to be served but to serve, we don't understand that as Jesus came to serve coffee and tea or bread. We know what that service means, that diaconia means. It means Jesus' ministry was to make sure that that life is enhanced, the quality of life is enhanced for everyone. That is the crux of the meaning of Jesus coming to serve in this world, the ministry in this world. So also we realize that this woman's story and life story after she is healed is not bound, limited to serving food at home, but service. Being a disciple of Jesus to the very end. At the end of Mark's gospel when we read about the crucifixion, we also refer to those women who stood from afar and were there with Jesus till the very end. Just because the women are not named does not mean 
that their service was only within bound within the limits of their home women were as much disciples of Jesus who served who provided for him and here is a woman who stands as a paradigm of a servant a minister to God there's another point there affirmation of that food ministry each time we prepare food and we serve those who are in need of that comfort. Every funeral meal is a time of affirmation that we are all one family. Family of families. A family of Jesus. Siblings in Christ. It is not bound just to the women and just within the kitchen. But the way we serve God as women and men in this world is to share that bread of life, the message of truth in this world. In the second reading that we had today, Paul is confronted with this question. What is the essence of the gospel? What do you do when there are Voices of dissent around. Voices that constantly complain and are in conflict. Are you allowed to eat this food? Are you allowed to mingle with these people? The way Paul confronts, encounters those questions, he puts it very blunt. He says, if I do not proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, woe is me. I cannot but preach the gospel simply because it is the good news of Jesus Christ. Sharing that good news is sharing life, faith and energy with one another, especially with those who are deprived of that living water, bread of life, the message of love and truth of Jesus Christ. What do we do today in stitching up these texts that we heard? What? We are reminded of that unconditional, unlimited, unbound grace of God for all. That is the way in which God's glory is revealed in Jesus. The second, if Jesus himself, the one who didn't have to pray to God as the son of God, chose as his point in life, his practice in life, to go and spend that time talking with God. How very important then for us to have that talking time with God, praying time with God. Very essential. For us to acknowledge and affirm that universal grace of God, today is another moment we gather. When we come up to receive the body and blood of Christ, to recognize the face of Christ in each other and thank God for this gift of life and life bread. May the peace that passeth all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Amen. <laughs>
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Everlasting God, you bring your healing power to the church. Give your church a spirit of unity and prayer. That we discern your way for us in the world. God of grace, receive our prayer. Creator of the ends of the earth, you make the grass grow and send rain for the soil. Bring your creation into harmony and balance. Give animals their food and provide healthy shelter for your people. Inspire us to honor the miraculous beauty of all you have made. <coughs> God of grace, receive our prayer. God without equal, your steadfast love endures forever. Bring the leaders, elected officials, and peacekeepers of our towns and countries into understanding and unity. Guide them to serve with compassion and understanding. God of grace, receive our prayer. God who strengthens, you lift up with your hand any who are suffering. Heal those who are brokenhearted and strengthen the weak in, and all in need. We specially lift up before you Ruth Trevin, <coughs> Kenny Thomas, Luke Smith, Hunter Bukauta, God of grace, receive our prayer. God who gives power to the faith, challenge us to share the faith stories of what God has done in our lives. Open us to receive the unique ways God is at work in your people. <laughs> especially those whose perspectives challenge our own. God of grace, God who calls each star by name, we remember all who have died. We name them aloud or silently in our hearts. Shelter all who mourn with your mercy and care, and give us hope in your promised salvation. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts 
In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blood of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> 
Christ who claims you and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you bless you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God.